Hello everyone, today we're going to take a quick look at the latest entry in the MCU, Black Widow. Directed by Kate Shortland and starring Scarlett Johansson and Florence Pugh. While Natasha Romanoff is on the run from the authorities since the events of Civil War, she runs into her adopted sister, played by Pugh, who she has not seen since childhood. And they decide it would be a great idea to take down the bastard that turned them into the assassins they are today, robbing them of their childhood and any potential motherhood. Along the way, they meet up with their adopted mother and father, played by Rachel Weisz and David Harbour, and get one big, happy family reunion, and then a bunch of shit goes kaboom because it's the MCU. It is about damn time that we got a Black Widow movie, which I still would have said even if this movie had come out in May of 2020 when it was originally supposed to. Of course, that didn't happen because the world went to shit, but Natasha has been the perpetual sidekick for so long and really did not get much of an arc from her first appearance in Iron Man 2 all the way through Endgame. First she was Iron Man sidekick and then she was Cap sidekick and then she was Hulk's love interest and then she died. And that was it. So we finally get our Black Widow movie and not what I was hoping for. It's not bad by any means, it's fine, but that's it. It was just fine. Apart from a flashback to her childhood at the beginning of the movie, pretty much the entire story takes place between Civil War and Infinity War. And it would have made a lot more sense if this movie actually came out between those two movies. But somehow we had to wait until 20 freaking 21. I mean, how the hell did we get Ant-Man 2 before we got Black Widow? But if you couldn't release the movie during that time period, or hell, even if you could, what I think would have worked a lot better would be to see more of Natasha's actual backstory. More of the time she spent being trained as a deadly Russian assassin, and how she ended up with all the red on her ledger. And yes, we get glimpses of that, but not nearly enough. And on top of that, in the story we got, she's pretty much the least interesting character, at least among the heroes. And that's not really ScarJo's fault, it's not Kate Shortland's fault, really, it's Marvel Studios' fault for putting them in this box. I mean, they did as good as they possibly could have done, I think, within the confines of that box. What they needed to do was let them out of the damn box. Because whatever Black Widow does within this box isn't gonna mean all that much in the grand scheme of things because the end of her story has already been told. Honestly, I was far more interested in Yelena, Natasha's adopted sister, because Florence Pugh is awesome, and this character is awesome. She is a very capable fighter and sarcastic as hell, clearly ran out of fucks to give 20 years ago. And I thought the sisterhood between Natasha and Yelena was done very well. Pugh is very good at playing a little sister. And based on this movie's post credit sequence, she will probably be around a little while longer. In fact, I think she's supposed to be in the Hawkeye series that's going to be on Disney+. Plus. I am okay with this. Rachel Weisz was really good as Melina, who is basically the patriarch of this dysfunctional fake family. David Harbour as Alexei, aka the Red Guardian, was hilarious. Basically, he's the Soviet counterpart to Captain America, and appears to have a bit of a man crush on Steve Rogers, which is totally understandable. And he was clearly a powerful superhero back in the day, but in recent years he has kinda let himself go. In fact, there's a very funny scene where he's trying to put on his old Red Guardian uniform, and he barely, and I mean barely, still fits into it. Now that I think about it, I'm actually a little surprised that they didn't have a scene where he bends over and rips his pants or something like that. My one complaint about this character is, in the opening flashback sequence, he's presented as a pretty capable spy, but in the present day, he's a total buffoon. Like, how did we get from point A to point B here? The main villain in the movie was kinda disappointing. Basically, he's just your generic Russian bad guy. Those guys have been a dime a dozen since the James Bond days, and it's no fault of Ray Winston who played the character, it's just the script didn't give him a lot to work with. The secondary villain, Taskmaster, who's played by Olga Kurilenko, was much more interesting. She is a very dangerous fighter and can basically adapt to any fighting style by mimicking her opponents. And through most of the movie, she's under a mask, and the eventual reveal of her identity was definitely not a surprise, but it was handled well. What wasn't handled terribly well was the end of the movie, where it seemed like they just kind of forgot about her. 
probably because they were far more focused on the big mega splody action sequence. Because it's an MCU movie and you have to have a big mega splody action sequence at the end, whether it fits the aesthetic of the rest of the movie or not. And it did not. If there was ever a movie in the MCU that did not need a sequence like that, it's the one about the friggin' spy. It wasn't bad by any means, it just, it felt out of place. Speaking of out of place, the music in the opening credit sequence. What the hell was that? The sequence itself was actually pretty effective. Basically, it's a montage of Natasha, Yelena, and the other widows as they're going through what can loosely be described as their childhood, uh, traumatizing as hell. But the music for this sequence was Smells Like Teen Spirit, reimagined as a dirge. No. Can we not do the slowed down versions of pop songs again? Because I know it worked with the social network, but it hasn't worked since, and it just, it needs to stop. Overall, it was okay. It had its moments, but it left me wanting more, and I wish Marvel Studios had let them do more. I do think this is one of the lesser MCU movies to date, but I don't regret seeing it. If you're in a position where you can see it in a theater safely, I don't think it's worth paying full price, but I can recommend it as a matinee. It's also on Disney Plus if you don't mind paying the $30 premium, but I personally think that's a big ask for any movie, regardless of how good it is. And that's all I have to say about Black Widow. Till next time, take care.